Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Make It Make, where I always try to encourage you, if you can't get it to make, then make it make. So today I'm going to be canning meat through the water bath. Now with that said, there's a couple of things I want to go over with you. Uh, please do not fast forward this segment because it, if you're going to be canning meat through the water bath, this is really important for you to know and watch. Now, I'm going to be very real with you because I have respect for both sides of the canning world. There are people who are strictly USDA canners. There are people who are more on the rebel side, which by the way, I'm not even gonna call it rebel canning anymore. I'm gonna call it original canning. That to me is just, for me, a better way, okay? And then there are the people who are in between. I've always said I'm the person that's in between. There is nothing about this method that is USDA approved, absolutely nothing. The USDA does not recommend that you water bath low acid foods. They recommend that you pressure can those foods. If you have never canned before, ever, I do not recommend jumping into these types of methods. I recommend that you start off by canning through USDA standards. The reason being is because you need to teach yourself the basics of canning. And as you start to feel comfortable, okay, and build confidence and learn these skill sets, you may end up being someone that's like, you know what, I feel safe with this. I've done my research. I would like to stick to USDA standards. And then, I'm sorry, but there are other people who are like, you know what, I kind of question this. And they start branching off with questions and start searching and looking at other ways to can their foods. What I'm trying to say is do not do yourself a disservice by just listening to me or other people. Do your own research. Do your own research. Do your own research. All right, so now I'm going to address the long awaited question, which has been altitude, 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 altitude. People constantly ask me about it and I absolutely do have an answer for you. But once again, I'm gonna be really upfront and honest with you. The answer that I have for you is just for some people, they're not going to be able to wrap their brains around it and it's going to be completely unacceptable to them. And that's because the answer is so simple. When I've talked to people who live in other countries, it's not a thing. Altitude to them is not a thing. Now I cannot speak a, you know, for every single person in every single country or in every single culture. I'm just telling you my experiences from people who have either come from other countries, still live in those countries, or live here in the United States, that that is their canning culture, okay? That is what they've been doing. I look, I get looked at every time I ask that question of altitude. So what do you think? What are the hours? What about your altitudes? What do you do? They look at me like I have three heads. So the answer is it's not a thing. And when I was told that I completely understood where they were coming from because once again, sorry to keep bringing up the Amish and Mennonite, but that's what we see here. Nobody questions it. And just because they don't question it, it doesn't mean that they're any less intelligent or any less smart than other people who do. Again, your kitchen, your rules. The first thing I'm gonna do is clean my jars with super hot soapy water. I've learned over the years that when it comes to canning meat, I recommend using a wide mouth jar just because it's easier for the meat to pour out. It's a lot harder to do it with a regular mouth jar, but as always, make it make, use what you have because at the end of the day, I want you to put up food. So the reason why I want to water bath my meat this time around as opposed to pressure canning it is because the last time I pressure canned my meat, and believe me, I followed all the steps correctly, it wasn't anything that I did. The top of the meat in some jars, because they weren't fully immersed in the liquid, was burnt, okay? Now, you could always add more liquid, it's just not something I've ever done, but it's still never guaranteed that with adding liquid, I wouldn't have some sort of siphoning overflow. And that's the reason why I don't add liquid. It's not, 
it's an optional thing. But I'm finding that if I don't, if the meat doesn't produce as much liquid to cover the entire part of the meat, then it comes out really hard or burnt. And I don't like that. Every little bit counts. So I need that meat. I don't want to pull out a couple cubes and throw them away, nor do I want to eat hard burnt food. And also there are other people who just don't have pressure canners who would just prefer to do it this way. Um, so that's why I'm doing it. I would really like my meat to be cooked and not burnt. The meats I have are two different cuts. I have chuck roast, two chuck roasts. It's beautiful. And I have two rump roasts. Now I'm just gonna start cubing my meat here, just in cubes. I know I do not have the best of knives. I have people tell me that all the time, but this is what I have to work with. And that's what I'm gonna do is just continue cutting this meat into cubes and then we'll add them to our jars. I have to say that in this video, I just feel so much more at peace and free to make this type of content. I don't know if you guys remember last year, if you've been following me or not, it was hard for me. I was so fearful and um, but I'm not anymore. I know for a fact that if the crap were to hit the fan and I had no other way of putting up food for my family, that I would absolutely do it this way. I ran out of my wide mouth jars. I have more, they're just filled. So I really want to stick with the wide mouth because of the whole regular mouth thing. So I have back up as my wet jars. I absolutely love these. I ordered these through Amazon. I do have a link for them, but I, as much as I would love for you to use it, I'm going to just tell you don't use it because when I ordered from them, they came broken. Like almost every single box came broken and I had to return them. Now the second shipping of it was fine, but I, I don't know. I would not even chance it. It's a hassle. If you want these, uh, try to find them in an, an, another store. <laughs> That's the best answer I could give you. So I have my first batch of meat cut up. I changed my mind. I'm going to combine uh, both types of cuts <laughs> into one jar. I've done it before. It turns out great. And anytime I do meat, especially with expensive items, I use a very good canning lid, a brand new lid. I don't reuse for for meat, okay? Um, it's one thing for me to lose a jelly jar, it's another thing for me to lose a seal for something like meat, okay? Um, of course, if you follow me, you know how much I love the Frajars canning lids. They guarantee every single seal, which to me, that's great. I don't wanna have to worry about it. Um, and obviously I do have a code for it. It does save you money. I tell people all the time, you don't have to use mine. If there's another creator that you like and you wanna support them in their business, then definitely use their code. My code is make it 10 all caps, and you do save 10% off. So I'm going to place my meat in the jar. Now at this point, if you want to add spices, you can, but I'm, I'm not. I like my meat to be really versatile, but you can absolutely add spices and seasonings. Now I'm pushing down on this meat because as I cook the meat, there's an amount of shrinkage that happens. You know, the, the meat cooks down. So I wanna fill up this jar as much as I can. I don't wanna take it out of the canner and then next thing you know, I have half the jar filled because of the shrinkage. To me, that's a waste of a jar. So I'm pushing down. Now you can sort of pre-cook this meat a little bit, but some people feel like what's the reason of pre-cooking the meat if it's going to be processed in a pressure canner or even a water bath. Some people think of that as cooking it twice. Now, when it comes to the 
chunks like a roast or um, it depends on the cut of meat is what I'm trying to say is whether or not I will decide to pre-cook it or brown it ahead of time. If it were a ground beef, whether I pressure can it or water bath it, I will absolutely brown it, the ground beef first, just a little bit because I don't know, I'm the type of person I don't like it coming out as like one block. I like it to come out and spread out if that makes sense. Uh, some people don't have a problem with that, but for me, I just much rather have the meat come out like that. Either way, whatever you decide, again, your kitchen, your rules. When it comes to cooking, people have their own preferences. I'm just giving you mine. So I don't have enough meat here to fill up a quart jar, but I know I have enough to fill up a pint. Now let's talk about processing times between a quart and a pint. Let's say that you came across a recipe from a Mennonite cookbook or an old Amish one, or just somebody who canned the old fashioned way. And they say that the processing time is three hours across the board, let's say for that particular recipe. They mean three hours for a quart and a pint. There is no cutting your time in half when it comes to these methods. If they say three hours, they mean it for a quart and for a pint. And again, wiping the rim. You don't want any food interfering with your seal. My favorite four jars lid. Screw the band on, fingertip tight. And now we have all our beautiful meat ready to go into the canner. All right, bringing my canner over. For the life of me, I cannot find my rack for the bottom of my canner, so we're gonna bust out a rag here. Yeah, that's old school right here. Um, but we're gonna do it because, you know, this is how they did it back in the day, and we're gonna make it make. I, I can't find it, so it's somewhere. I just don't know where it is. This is gonna help prevent the jars from hitting the bottom of the canner and also clanking too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and place my jars in the, can in the canner. This was a cold pack method, which means cold jar, cold food, cold water, okay? Everything the same temperature because you don't want your jars to crack. If you put cold jars in hot water, they can crack. You don't want that. Now remember, this is a three hour water bath, so I suggest that you periodically check your water levels because it's going to evaporate. What I like to do is keep a kettle close by, fill it up. I like to fill it up with hot water to give myself a jump start. And I do this about five minutes as I, before I need, before I see that I have to add it. And it's fine because it's about this exact same temperature you want to try to keep it as close to boiling as possible. If the boil goes down for like a minute, it's fine. It's not going to ruin the whole batch. Okay. Sometimes depending on how long your water bath is, you may have to fill it up once. I usually fill it up two to three times. I'm going to put my heat on high and close the lid. I'm not going to start my timing until it hits a rolling boil, not a simmer, not a chatter, a rolling boil. All right, so when you take a look at my canner right now, the water is just barely skimming over top of the lids. This is the point when I want to start adding my water. So I have my kettle on. Actually, it's just ready right now. I'm going to add this water. Right now, we are an hour into our three hour water bath. And it's still, as you can see, it's still rolling over, uh, rolling over boiling. And then just cover it up. And once again, just keep an eye on it to see if you need to top it off with some more water. All right, our processing time is over. We've reached three hours. We want to turn the heat off. I am gonna allow my jars to cool down a little bit before I take them out. 
and then what I'm going to do is see you all tomorrow morning and take a look at the jars and actually compare them to pressure can jars as well. Good morning. It is the next morning and right now I'm checking all of my seals. Everything looks good and I'm in the process of taking all the rings off because we don't need them now that all the seals are good. Here is what it looks like. Hold on, I'll give you a better look. Here is a process jar through the pressure canner. And then I'm gonna put them right up next to each other. Actually, I'll take, I have a pint size, let's do a pint. Okay, pressure canner, water bath. This one here obviously looks more pink. This one looks a little bit more dark. And yes, this water bath jar is fully cooked. And that's it. I hope you all enjoyed this video. There was a lot of information on here. Thank you for bearing with me. Uh, I will continue to bring more things as they come, but as always guys, take care and God bless. Okay, good. Good job.